Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem maximum value of an ordered triplet one. And this problem is actually exactly the same as a different problem, but just take a look at the constraints for a second. So the length of this array could be up to a hundred and the values could be, you know, up to a million, I think between one and a million. But the length is what I want you to pay attention to because this is the exact same problem as this one, maximum value of an ordered triplet two. I mean, I wish they had said that this is the exact same problem, but if you just read it, you'll see that it is. The only difference is, yes, the constraint. The first one, the length of this array could be up to 100,000. So that's why for today's problem, I'm not going to be covering the most optimal solution to this one because I'll probably cover it when we solve the second one. And I don't know what order these are going to be the daily problems, but hopefully this one is first and then the next one is right after that. But anyways, let's get into it. The main idea is pretty simple. We want to look at all possible triplets. And so again, the order of these is going to be like i, j, k, where j is gonna to be to the right of i, k is gonna to be to the right of j. So they're gonna be uh, elements at different positions. And so for every single triplet, we say that the value of that triplet is going to be this little mathematical formula here, some very basic arithmetic. We take the number at i, subtract from it the number at j, and then take the result of that and multiply it by the number at k. If you look at this formula as a black box, you don't have a chance of solving this problem optimally. But that's okay because this is an easy problem. You can think of this uh, equation as a black box. You don't have to think about it any deeper than that. And then you can just go through every possible triplet. There's going to be roughly n cubed triplets, triple nested loops. Pretty easy to do that. And then we calculate the value of the triplet. What we want to do is return the one that is maximal. So, okay, maximal. Now I'm thinking maybe this formula isn't a black box. Maybe there is some intuition we can get from this formula. But let's just start with the easy solution. Just going to be triple nested loops. So it's going to be pretty trivial to code that up. They tell us that the smallest value, the return value can be zero. So if we only have negative values for all of our triplets, we would just return zero. So I'll initialize my result as that. And then I'm just going to go through the nested loops. I'm going to put the length into a variable like this. And then I'm just going to pretty much type this out as fast as I can, because this is mostly trivial. So in your language of choice, you can kind of do the same thing. Just write your triple nested loops. I wish I was better at typing, but I'm not. So let's make this a K. And then inside of here, we just want to maximize it. So pretty cookie cutter solution. Let's do our parentheses nums of I minus nums of J multiplied by nums of K. And we start every pointer at one plus the previous one. So this way we will get every single possible triplet. We will return the one that is maximal. And so you can see, yes, this solution works, but there's actually a better one. And actually there's an even better one from that as well. I'll cover the N squared solution. I think there's actually two ways to implement it. But I'll go ahead and cover one of the uh, solutions. I'll cover the n squared solution. And now we're not going to think of this as a black box anymore. The word that I like to use is we're going to make some observations. So even though this is an easy problem, maybe you already know how to solve it. Pay attention to the process that I'm following, because this sort of process is what you're going to want to do when you encounter more difficult problems that you have no idea how to solve. So now I'm taking a look at this. We want to maximize our result. So in this formula, if I wanted to take a shortcut or try to do some kind of like intuition to maximize this formula, what would I do? I'd probably want this number to be as big as possible because that's going to maximize our result. Now, I don't want every one of these numbers to be as big as possible because this number is actually being subtracted from this one. So actually, I want to maximize the number at index I. I want to minimize the number at index J. 
and this one is being multiplied by the result of that, so probably want to maximize this one as well. So now we kind of have a bit of intuition, and when I said shortcut earlier, that's another way of saying we're going to try to be a little bit greedy with this problem. If I had my three pointers, and let me kind of draw out some random example over here. So let's draw like a two, three, four, and maybe a two, and just some random values, whatever. Let's say I have my I pointer over here and my J over here. I take the difference between these, it turns out to be negative one. Okay, then I move my J over here. Now the difference between these two is negative two. And I'd keep going, and I'm not kind of drawing out the entire process, because even in a real interview, I mean, you're not going to have time to do a dry run with three nested loops. That's going to be very time consuming. So you got to take some mental shortcuts. So I'm thinking of this as, okay, I'm going to have my eye pointer fixed here. It's the outer loop. I'm going to have my J pointer scanning through. And each time my J pointer is going to be out of position, it's going to be fixed as well. And then I'm going to have my K scan through the remaining portion. Okay. We're trying to pick the biggest value for the one at index I. What kind of shortcut could we take? Well, first of all, when I'm over here, my J value is bigger than over here. I could have my K iterate over the entire thing, but I don't think I want to waste my time doing that. I think when I see a value at index J that's bigger than the one at index I, I don't need to do that. I can just say, okay, well, screw it. I'm just going to take the shortcut and put my I pointer over here. And then maybe one more time. Now my J pointer is over here. Well, once again, this is bigger than that one. So I don't think I need to do anything here. I'm just going to put my I pointer over here once again. And the reason for that is not just because these two were negative, like the difference between those two was negative. But if we're trying to maximize the result, we want the value at index I to be as big as possible. Like if I have a choice to put my I value here or over here, or over here, of course, I'm going to pick the biggest one that we've seen so far because it doesn't really matter. I could take the difference. I could subtract this from that or from that or from that. And the one that's going to be the biggest is always going to be the biggest number that we've seen so far. This is the greedy part of the algorithm. We take a shortcut and we say that the biggest number we've seen so far is always going to be the one at index I. And this idea alone is enough to take the n cubed time complexity and bring it down to be n squared. So in terms of coding, it's still a little bit tricky. Like, how would you translate this idea into code? And I'll tell you uh, how I'm going to do it. It's a pretty standard thing. So we had like those triple nested loops, right? Like we had for i, and then we had for j, and then we had for k. What I'm going to do is eliminate this outer loop and only need these two because I'm going to say, OK, this pointer is going to be the J value. This pointer is going to be the K value. It's going to tell me which value is going to be this one. And the reason I don't need this loop anymore is because we're being greedy. We're going to say whichever largest value we've seen so far with our J pointer is going to be the one that is the I value. We don't need to try every possibility. We only need to try the max that we've seen so far. Just to do a very quick dry run, because I know there might be some beginners kind of watching this. What I'm going to say is my uh, prefix max, or I don't know what to call it. Maybe let's call it left because we have a left, middle, and right. So I'm going to say my left is initially going to be the first value. Let's call it nums at index zero, which initially is going to be two. And then I'm going to have my J pointer start at the second value. And I'm going to check, is this bigger than that one? Yes, it is. So all we do is just basically replace this with the new value, which is three. Okay, now my J is going to be over here. Is this bigger? Yes, it is. So once again, replace it with the value here. It's four now. Okay, so now my J is over here. Finally, there is a smaller value over here. So now we kind of brute force the rest of this. We put K at the next spot. We know the difference between this and this is two. So multiply two by five, you get 10. And then K is going to be over here. Multiply two by seven, you get 14. Okay, that's the biggest we've seen so far. And then we once again continue. Now J is going to be over here. Once again, it's bigger uh, than anything we've seen before. So go ahead and just replace the left value with five. And now J is going to be over here. But now we don't have any uh, elements for K. So we stop. 
And then I think the result we had was 14. The biggest product, I believe, would be this, this, and then seven, the biggest uh, formula. So let's code this one up. So this was the code we started with, and I'm going to get rid of this loop, and then I can just shift tab these over. I can set my left value to the first one, and just cleaning up the code, this can start at index one, this will start at J plus one, and it will kind of continue doing this. Now here, one thing we can say is if the value at J is actually bigger than the value at left, then replace it. Left will now be this value. Now we could put a continue statement here, I'm pretty sure it's not necessary. Putting a continue here would save us a little bit of time. It wouldn't change the overall time complexity, but it would save us some time. But I'm pretty sure it'll work without it anyway, because even though you might say, well, how can the left value and the middle value both be the same? You're right, they shouldn't be allowed to be the same. But at the same time, recognize that we're gonna still take the difference um, between, oh, uh, that reminds me over here, we shouldn't do nums of i, we should do the left value. Okay, good catch there. Uh, but recognize that the difference here is always going to be zero. So if you take zero and multiply it by any value, it's going to be zero anyway. So that's why you don't need a continue statement. Let me just run it to make sure. Yes, so you can see, yes, that this does work pretty efficient. Let's put a continue here, though. That should make it slightly more efficient. But there you go. You see it works. This is the n squared solution. Now, can you think of the actual linear time solution? It's also going to be a greedy one. I'll give you a hint, but probably tomorrow's daily problem will be that one. So you can also wait until tomorrow. But anyways, if you found this helpful, check out NeatCode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.